Hey, my friends, welcome back to the Flamingo Advantage podcast. I'm your host, Katie Horner, and I'm super excited to dive in today to a very niche industry. We're going to be talking about needlepoint. We're going to be talking about art that you do with your hands on on fabric with thread. Um, very, very interesting and special. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Welcome to the Flamingo Advantage podcast. I'm so excited to introduce our guest today. This is my friend who is the host of The Stitchers Club over at serendipitynedleworks.com. She has almost 20 years of experience in retail and actually selling physical products from a store shop, but she's also got a lot of years of experience in the online space, teaching educational classes, selling online courses and products. And I know you're going to be able to take away a lot from today's episode. So thank Thank you, Ellen Johnson, for being with us. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a joy to be able to share my knowledge that I've gleaned over the years with people who are uh, looking to expand their horizons. So lots of fun in store for us, I'm sure. We have a lot of different people listening to this episode. Some of them already have businesses that they're trying to grow with their marketing. Some are physical products. Some of them are all online, knowledge-based coaching kind of thing. Um, and you've got experience in both of those. So I almost don't really know where to start with you today. <laughs> but um, maybe just start with explaining what you do in your business now and how, how you help, like what do you provide for folks in, your, in, in the way that you make money online currently? Okay, perfect. So um, I landed in the online space about seven years ago, actually as a result of closing my, my brick and mortar store. So what I noticed after I closed my brick and mortar store was that there was definitely a gap in the needlepoint side of the crafting industry. Um, there were not any really any resources available or easy to find resources available for people who do needlepoint as a hobby. So I thought, well, we'll create this wonderful online resource center for all things needlepoint, which is what evolved into our membership program called the Stitchers Club. And after I got going with the Stitchers Club, I discovered that there were also a lot of people who were either self-taught or who were new to Needlepoint and really didn't have a solid foundation. Enter Needlepoint Made Easy, my online course. So that fits into the program in a couple of ways. Obviously, some people can come into the membership uh, or you can come into the membership uh, without having taken the course, but if you need that uh, that background or that solid foundation for your needlepoint hobby, then that's there as well. So lots, lots of fun things. And then I also teach some one-off classes, um, technique-based classes, and those happen throughout the year. So they're um, available for people who are not in the membership, um, although people in the membership get a complimentary ticket as part of their membership. So. Ooh, fun. And you also sell kits and physical materials still as a part of this, don't you? Yeah, we do. We well, I should let me back up. I include whenever I teach uh, my needlepoint boot camp, which is a one day event uh, that's actually coming up in January, um, and or we do it at the beginning of the year every year. Um, it is a one day event where I go over uh, the essentials or the fundamentals of needlepoint, and that includes a physical kit. So we wanted to make sure that everyone who is participating in these classes has the opportunity to get that materials easily because needlepoint shops are quite few and far between. Um, and there are a lot of people who live in what they call a needlepoint wasteland, and they don't have access to easily um, available uh, supplies. So when we do classes like that, um, I do try to make sure that we include the physical product or the kit. Um, when we do uh, other events, I have online retreats as well. And so when we have an online retreat that's a project-based retreat, then of course we do provide the kit, those kinds of, of classes too. At the present time, we don't have a shopping cart where you can come online and purchase a, a physical kit, a physical product kit, but that is in the um, not too distant future. So yeah. Okay. Okay, nice. So talk to us a little bit then around um, when you're marketing something that has both the online and a physical component. Like I know just from, you know, sending our sunshine boxes out for our live events that, you know, you have to, you have to have a certain amount of product in stock, even though you don't know how many you're going to sell yet. And, and then if you oversell, you've got to have a way to get that product in quickly to get it to everyone in time to start the thing together. Like there's a lot that goes into that, isn't there? 
there absolutely is. And what I've tried to do, um, at least up to this point, is make sure that I'm using materials that either have a shelf life that is not going to really create any kind of a drain on my cash flow. So knowing that, for example, with the Needlepoint Boot Camp, it's a very generic kit that we include. I mean, very basic fundamental pieces of, of uh, our fundamental supplies that anybody that does Needlepoint would use. So we have that available and it's something that, you know, it's relatively easy for me to get um, source uh, refills on those things pretty quickly because I have a good relationship with one supplier and I try to keep, I guess this would be maybe a, a strategy for people that are considering doing this kind of thing would be to try and limit the number of vendors that you work with. If you can find someone who has the opportunity or has the availability to, to, to fulfill multiple parts of your kit, that makes it a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. And so as far as that goes, you know, the Keeping it simple, I guess, is, is really the best way to, to put it. The, the simpler you keep it, the easier it is on you. And that's really the name of the game because unless you have a fulfillment house, you don't have really the flexibility to, to be able to, especially today with the supply chain being the issue that it has become, uh, you know, it's not always super easy to get a lot of refills quickly, but you can do everything, like I said, by limiting the number of vendors that you're working with, you can at least reduce the, maybe some of that friction. So, and, and I then, imagine if you're, if you're doing this on a repeated basis, if you're right, doing the boot camp right. a couple of times a year, you're doing the same project, you know, several times that, that, that also helps because if, if we, oh, yeah. we can overstock knowing right. that if we don't sell it with tickets to this one, it's the same right. thing we're using the next time we do this, right? We're not talking Absolutely. about food that's going to go stale or something exactly. like that. Yeah. Um, and so that that also makes sense and is something to think about. Yeah. So when I do, and, and I guess it, it, it's worth mentioning that the kit that we use for Needlepoint Boot Camp is also an upsell for the Needlepoint Made Easy course. So if somebody comes into the Needlepoint Made Easy course, we don't, at this present time, we don't include the materials for Needlepoint Made Easy, um, but we do offer that as an upsell. So it's an opportunity for me to keep things kind of fresh and moving so that I don't end up sitting on a whole lot of inventory um, at any one given time. And then the project-based classes that we have, um, I do have an Etsy store uh, that I have used in the past um, if, say, I commit because in the needlepoint industry, if I'm going to teach a particular canvas, I have to know ahead of time how many, what, what is my comfort zone? You know, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, we're going to sell 25 seats to this class. So I'll order 25 of the canvas and create 25 of the kits, knowing full well that I'm probably going to sell most of them just based on the history that I have. But if I do end up with one or two extras, then I know I can, can always put them on the, in the Etsy store. And when we do get the shopping cart set up on our new website, uh, you know, we'll be able to put those there as well and give people the opportunity to buy the, the recordings for the class that was taught with that particular project. And then they can have the kit as well. So yeah. I love when I get to talk to seasoned entrepreneurs because uh, a couple of things that you've been saying here, like it just, those who've been in the business for a while, we talk about, you know, having, having data. We talk about when we do it again, we talk, you know, I think it, it's always noticeable with like a new entrepreneur is like, well, I tried that and that didn't work. So then we're on to the next thing, you know? Um, and, and, but you're, you have really dialed this in and done it again. And how many times have you launched your boot camp? would you say? Well, now this is going to be just the second year that we've launched boot camp. Um, but we've done Needlepoint Made Easy for six years. So I just decided last year, you know, we sell our Needlepoint Made Easy course, but something that I had continued to notice was that there were plenty of people that were interested in the course, but when they found out that there was no support, so to speak, or no interaction with me, that it wasn't a live class, they opted not to participate. And I thought, well, there's a gap there. So we need to fill that gap for those people who are more of a, an auditory type learner or a live, you know, I do better by, 
um, having someone guide me through. And all of that comes into, I guess, my background's in education, ironically, not in business, um, but my background is in education and knowing that people learn in different ways. Uh, you know, you have the, the different learning styles, knowing that it's super important to reach all of those audiences. So maybe you have one kind of content or one, essentially one product, but different ways of delivering it. And I think it also makes it easier on you as a business owner um, or as a content creator to reuse what you already have rather than constantly be trying to come up with the next best thing. Because I'm quoting a fellow mastermind members here by saying, you're only as good as your last event, you know? And so if you're trying to comp constantly be reinventing or coming up with the next big thing, you know, that can be a real strain. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's something that we're working hard to make sure that we reuse the materials, the content that we have and maybe repackage it in fresh and exciting ways. Yeah, I love that. You know, it's the same nuts and bolts. It's the same frame, right? Yep. We get to tweak the experience. We get to tweak the packaging. We get to tweak what we're doing to, to create better and better results. But but you are, you know, you're all in on this is what we do. And yeah. we get to become better at it all the time. I love that. Talk to us a little bit about some of the differences you've noticed between the marketing you used to do with your retail store versus the marketing that you now do for what you sell online. Because I know we've had a lot of people that are moving from retail in person into the online space and really struggling to to get their stuff out there online. Like before I could see the people and now I can't see the people, right? And right. what's some of the things that you've been able to do that's helped you to market successfully online? Well, I will say when I moved into the online space, I came with a list of about 300 people that were interested in needlepoint because I had knitting and needlepoint supplies in my retail shop. So after spending some time thinking about, okay, which audience do I want to serve and choosing the needlepoint audience, um, I was able to whittle my list down to about 300 people. So I had some addresses that I could use to uh, communicate with those people. And I just began the process of developing relationships. And I think, you know, you say there's, there's a difference between marketing in, to, to an in-person audience as opposed to marketing to an online audience, but it's not as big a gap as you might think, or as one might think, because it's all still relationship based. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is a person behind that email address, just like there is a person behind that social media profile. So essentially what I did was I found groups online that already existed that were in my niche. And I became an, a member of those groups and I began to interact with people in those groups and was able to develop those relationships and, and encouraged people, you know, shared things that I would do. Like I do some Facebook lives and I'd invite people to come and join me. Um, I would do maybe a, a challenge where we're going to do a fun get together kind of thing on Zoom. I mean, we were doing Zoom, quite frankly, back in... I guess probably about 2018 or 19, well before COVID. So, and I say that, I mean, that's not hugely before COVID, but in the greater scheme of things, when you think about it, yeah, it, it was. I mean, we were amongst the first to be doing Zoom calls with people in the needlepoint space um, and super fun, you know, but again, to just remember that that one-to-one -one connection um, can actually be a little bit similar to the one to the face to face that with all the technology that we have available to us these days, it's almost like you can mimic that. Um, you just remember that the person that you're dealing with is actually, you know, another, another person just in another place. It's, they're just not in your backyard or at your front door. So. I love that. I love that. And those of you, again, that are listening or watching this today, we're talking with Ellen Johnson from serendipitynedleworks.com. You want to go over and check out what she's got going there. Um, sign up for her upcoming boot camp. If you're interested in needlework, uh, get on her list, see how she's marketing and excited to to be able to share her with you. Ellen, thank you so much for all of this. You're, you just have so much wisdom from all of your years in business here. What would you leave us with today? One final thought for those that are, are working to, to market their business online. I think the main thing to remember is that you are here to serve. 
you're here to provide whatever your gift or talent is um, as a service to whomever may need that. And if you come at things from a place of service and remember that the people that you're interacting with are indeed other human beings who have thoughts and dreams and hopes and desires of their own, then uh, you can't help but, but come out on top. You know, it, it's all about the connection that you make with the people that you engage with. Um, and, and I would say, you know, that's, that's what we try to do at Serendipity Needleworks. And um, I've, I feel like we've been successful with it. And it's truly a blessing to be able to do what I love every day as my vocation. So well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, sure. So appreciate it. For all of our guests, we want to encourage you again, head over to serendipitynedleworks.com and check out what Ellen has for you there. Uh, we have the links in the show notes as well. If you want to check that out, we would love to connect with you. And so we will have our phone number actually in the show notes today. We would love for you to just send us a text to let us know what you're thinking, what questions we might be able to help you with. But we're looking forward to connecting with you. If this has been helpful for you, we'd love to have you share it with a friend. Remember, your message matters. We'll see you in the next episode.